Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. Welcome to another Inspired Fireside Chat. Today our guest is Rael Isakowicz and he is the founder of Basi Pilates and we will be talking about of course his journey and also how Pilates has been an engine for change. My name is Paola Shah, I am the founder and CEO of Tuckets. Tuckets are high performance grip socks that enhance the foot brain connection and give you confidence to step in any per foot workout. Tuckets are made with love and care in Colombia and also our objective is to help you to elevate you through your feet. I see Raul is here. This is great. He's joining very soon. And while he joins, oh yes. Hello. Hi, how are you? Very good. Can you hear me well? I can hear you perfectly. I cannot see my whole face, but that's not a problem. Oh, you cannot see your face. <laughs> I, can, I can see you. You can see me. That's all you need. No I, I can see your entire face. So good. This is great. <laughs> Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. I'm very excited to have you here. You're most uh, welcome. And then, um, so let's jump straight away. Absolutely. And I prefer for my guests to introduce themselves because I don't want to miss anything. So who is Ryle? Well, uh, I am the founder of uh, Bassi Pilates. Uh, Bassi Pilates was founded in 1989. And since then, I have uh, worked for the last uh, almost 32 years in uh, building this incredible community of people around the globe. Uh, it started with a tiny, tiny little seed of an idea with three students. And now it is um, represented in uh, 45 countries, around 120 host locations. Uh, the community is over 40,000. And uh, we have 100 faculty around the world that are teaching the program. Um, and that, that's, you know, focused on Bassi Pilates, if you want to ask questions about my life or where I'm from, anything else, up to you, Paula. Yes, yes, this is a great start. I, I also would like to know, yes, where are you from? When I was reading about you, I was like, are you from Australia, from England? From, <laughs> where are you from? So uh, I've spent time in both countries, but I, I was actually born in South Africa. Okay. And uh, I moved to Israel when I was almost 16 years old. And um, I lived in Israel for many years. I then moved to England to continue dancing professionally. I did my master's degree in dance studies in uh, England. In Israel, I completed my undergraduate studies in exercise physiology and biomechanics, um, actually a physical education degree, but with a focus on exercise physiology and biomechanics. But my graduate studies were in dance. I performed for many years. So I lived in England and then I moved to Australia where I um, was the head of a modern dance department in a performing arts college. And I taught Pilates in the college uh, to both students and people from the outside. In Australia, I started working with many professional athletes, um, many dancers, and uh, working together with physiotherapists, doctors, osteopaths, creating a multidisciplinary approach to well being. And that's where I started. Uh, Bassi Pilates, and then I was invited to come to the United States, first as a guest artist to choreograph and perform, and later on by an orthopedic surgeon to help him set up a rehabilitation program based on the Pilates approach. And that brought me to the United States in uh, 1991. 
And then you stay here. And then I stay here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what was lacking at the time? Because I guess, um, I think, you know, when you create any business is because you don't find whatever you need or you think other people need that solve a problem and it's not there. So Pilates existed, of course, at the moment. There were other people doing Pilates. What motivated you to create BASI and kind of what gap were you trying to, to cover? That's an incredible question, Paula. I mean, you, you, you really hit the nail right on the head. And that is when I was in Australia. Let me go back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in Israel, I was invited to join the faculty of the college that I had graduated from. Mm -hmm. It's a very well-known college. It's called the Wingate Institute for Physical Education. And uh, at the Wingate Institute, we did a lot of research into exercise physiology. So it's a, it's a well-known college and I was invited to come back as faculty. I joined the faculty there and worked as faculty for three years. So I had experience in creating curricula and syllabus for teaching teachers. That's what I was, do, I was doing. I was teaching teachers of physical education. So when I started getting into Pilates, most people were learning Pilates through becoming an apprentice. You simply became a client and then you had an interest in becoming a teacher. So you started working in a studio and over the years, you just got to learn from another teacher. So it was all by being an assistant or an apprentice. And I saw there was a real need, a gap, as you said, mm -hmm. for a curriculum based teacher training program, a formal education in Pilates until that point, there wasn't really a formal education in Pilates. It, it, it was, as I said, just becoming an apprentice. There were a couple of programs. They weren't quite as structured as what I felt it should be. So I created a structured, formal, curriculum-based education program for Pilates teachers. And uh, the first course had three people. One was a physiotherapist, one a dancer, and one an actress. So, you know, that, 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 and Bassie has always been very diverse, very diverse. That's what makes me so proud of Bassie. All cultures, all people, all religions, all genders, all types, we welcome everyone has a home within Bassi Pilates. That's amazing. That's, that's beautiful because um, this is what Tokyo says. Well, I'm, I'm from Colombia starting <laughs> from that, you know, like I'm married to, to someone that was born here, but from India, we met in London. It's like and different religions in our family. And, 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 and this is awesome. how- That's awesome, that's amazing. And how I align with other businesses the, the same way. And then, um, so talking about business, you know, running a business is a roller coaster. I, <laughs> I know during those, what, 30 years, 32 years, it has been many ups and downs. Could you share with us maybe one or two challenges that um, you have encountered and then now that you have also overcome and, and how do you do it? Well, you know, I've been doing Pilates for over 40 years and uh, Bassi Pilates for over 30. And um, uh, Paula, you're absolutely correct. Uh, uh, running a business is, is an incredibly challenging endeavor. I, I don't think mm -hmm. people who have never done it realize how challenging it is. Mm -hmm. You live it, you breathe it, you never go home. You, it, the business is with you all the time. With me anyway, I, 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 I think just looking at you, I think you may feel the same way about business. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> but it, it, it really is. And, um, you know, I, I think the challenges that have come from with 
within the Pilates industry and those that have come from within the business. I would say the, the, uh, the greatest challenge within the business mm -hmm. has been creating a good, stable, solid team of people. The, you know, the human resources. It's really hard to find the correct blend of human resources. And I would say that has been my biggest challenge from within the business. And I've worked with great people, great people. Uh, but it's, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, the challenge from the outside has been keeping my compass, keeping, as we say, my North Star, keeping my direction, keeping the integrity of the work within an industry mm -hmm. that has grown by hundreds of percent very quickly, thousands of percent, actually, you know, from the early 90s when there were maybe a few thousand people doing Pilates to the early 2000s when suddenly there were millions of people mm -hmm. doing Pilates. So that growth was so quick and so huge. And I think many of us early teachers were struggling to find our niche, to find our place within the community. And um, that, that was always a, a, a struggle. You know, am I, am I finding a good balance between being successful as a business, but not compromising my integrity and my strong beliefs of what mm -hmm. Pilates should be and how it should be taught. Yeah, and I, I think that that balance is, is um, really what keeps a business alive, right? Because actually it's passion, it's being consistent and true to your own passion. And I think passion is what moves us forward, especially as an entrepreneur. And, you know, uh, I consider like any studio owner, yeah. even club instructors, is, is that entrepreneurship mind. So this is, um, and what you're saying is, 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 I think it's a great tip for all of us to be. I think, I think that balance, that balance is, is crucial. Uh, for me, it is. And, you know, I'm not here to judge anyone else. Uh, you know, some people get into Pilates. I know many that get into Pilates because they are entrepreneurs, they business people. Pilates is their product. They could be selling anything, but Pilates is the product mm -hmm. and they sell it. For me, um, P Pilates and Bassi Pilates it's a lifestyle company. It's a life company. Actually, it started as uh, about exercise and movement. And it then became more holistic about well-being. And then it became about lifestyle, about taking it into your life. And now after um, over 30 years of running Bassi, 32 years of running Bassi, uh, I'm 65 almost 66. And for me now, what is the most important is the social change that I want to create and use Bassi as a platform for overcoming social injustice, social inequality, making the world, making society and the world a better place. Because, and we start from the individual changing the individual, making that each individual's life better, well-being for the individual. But well-being for the individual without looking at well-being for society and the world is too short-sighted. We, For me, for Bassi, we have to look outward beyond ourselves and uh, create well-being around us, in society around us. So it, it's really uh, been an evolution uh, for my own life and for how I view uh, Bassi. So how did you do to create that well-being and to create that diversity and community through 
a Pilates mat or a Pilates reformer or yeah. any you know other that? equipment that is related to Pilates? Like how, how do you translate exercise into, you know, bigger costs? You know, that, that's probably the, the most profound and excellent question you could ask and it's also the hardest for me to answer uh, because that's you know, why this is a fireside <laughs> fire <laughs> you know te teaching an exercise is very um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to say easy but it's simple because you're teaching something very tangible something very exact And, and Bassi is known, and I'm known mm -hmm. for, for being very exact and precise. Precise. Mm -hmm. um, teaching something that is to do with mind, with, that, with spirit, that is much more holistic, is a very difficult thing to teach because you cannot always articulate it in words. Uh, I feel it needs to come across by osmosis, uh, osmosis in uh, Spanish. I wish I knew my Espanol is not no, it's good the same. at all. It's the same. <laughs> same, mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you need to live it. You need to feel it. People need to feel the passion from you. you They need to, need to be it. inspired mm -hmm. by the passion from you. It's not, you can't just teach it like an exercise. That's why the physical part of Pilates It's very uh, simple. And that's why so many people, including teachers and schools, latch onto the physical part because the physical part is the easiest part. The mental part, the emotional part, the spiritual part, the holistic well being, that is where lifestyle comes into it. And that comes across by your own uh, passion when you teach, by your own example of how you live your life, by the way you talk, the way you approach equipment, the way you approach a, a studio, the, way, the, the, the environment that you teach in, from the moment people walk into your studio, how your studio is set up, the, 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 the uh, environment, the feel, the atmosphere, All that lends itself to creating a certain mood and a certain feeling. So people know me. They know that I am not going to compromise on quality. They know that I take Pilates into my life and I bring my life into Pilates. They know how I live. And hopefully that can inspire them to see that... that um, To, to maybe take inspiration, not to be exactly like me, not everyone has to take their inspiration from the ocean. I take so much inspiration from the ocean. I take inspiration from my family. Um, I take inspiration from many things in life, from my students. Not everyone is going to be the same. You breathe inspiration into tuckets, into your socks, into that for you is your passion. Right. And, uh, and, and that's going to come across in an interview like this, in, in your social media, in stories you write, in blogs you write. In, so over the years, I've written two books, and those books have been read by uh, over a quarter of a million people. Uh, that, that's a lot of people that have mm -hmm. read into my soul. So... Uh, Paula, it's many ways that I bring it across. And, but honestly, it's the hardest thing to teach because <laughs> some people get it and some people don't get it. But and I, some I have, days I am better than other days. Right. And I have to, to say, and for the interviews that I have done to some of your mentees or students or people that, you know, some of my clients that I have talked to, I think you have successfully been able to transmit that feeling, that passion, the values. And then, so my next question is, I personally believe, and I know you align with this, that 
a business actually must create impact beyond profit, right? And then you have been teaching Pilates to thousands of people, and at the same time, you have created like a tremendous impact in those people's lives. And more important, they have become outstanding teachers, not only because of the way how they teach Pilates, but how they kind of mirror, replicate, or pay forward with their own clients what you have done with them. Mm -hmm. And then, so in my mind, um, among all the people that I know you have worked with, but Lisa Hodder comes to my mind. And I think the role of a mentor is so important and, and the impact that someone can create, uh, like you have been, you know, doing during all these years, it's important. But my question here is, what do you attribute kind of this success in mentoring people and then for them to pay it forward and to, to take outside BASI on their, even their own brands, core values that made them just better human beings. How, like, what is the secret sauce here? Well, I, you asked, asked just such great questions. Um, you know, first of all, I, I strongly believe that people are attracted to certain people. You know, even in our personal relationships, you know, we, we, are, we are attracted to a partner, we're attracted to friends. And you're attracted to certain people that you feel can fulfill your life in, in, in ways at any time, at any particular time in life. So, you know, you take a great example. Uh, Lisa came to me as a client, first of all, and then uh, she wasn't, uh, she had a different career at the time. Mm -hmm. And then slowly was inspired to do Pilates as a client and then do Pilates study it as a student and then become a teacher and then create her own uh, approach. And that is good, you know, that, that people, some people stay for years and others, we will always be connected, but others go off and create something different. I, I think that uh, being a mentor to people is my greatest honor. Honesty, I, I, I truly regard it as an honor if, if I'm a mentor for a short period, for a long period, for whatever it is, for that time, uh, I regard it as such an honor and um, I am humbled by that. And, uh, you know, I, I look at the different people that have come out of Bassey and have grown out of Bassey that are... I know you know them, like Lisa Hubbard, like Tracy Mallet, like mm -hmm. um, um, Christy Cooper, like, um, you know, so many. I, I could go on naming and forgive me, I, I would name so many that are yeah. just dear, dear, dear people to me and will always be dear to me. I think uh, the, my guiding light always is humility that we all need to live with humility in our hearts, not just say it in words, but live it in our hearts and in our lives. And that is a guiding light for me every single day. And some days I succeed and some days I fail. But every day I try to do better than I did the day before as a father, as a husband, as a teacher, as a mentor, as a student. The other thing is that we need to always keep the mindset of a student. We cannot enter into the mindset of that we are teachers and therefore not students. No, because we are teachers, it is imperative to keep the mindset of a student. It is our, it is our duty to keep that mindset of a student so that you are always learning and that you are always feeling a connection with your students and what they're going through. So Paula, I have a, a, uh, an agreement with myself. Every few years or every decade, I teach myself new sports, new activities that make me feel like a beginner and make me feel um, the frustration 
of learning something new and sometimes being scared and sometimes uh, uh, that fear, the, the, the feeling uncoordinated and so that I know all the time what students feel like and never feeling, why aren't you getting it? I mean, can't you get such a simple move, a pelvic curl? No, never, ever, ever can I say that. Uh, that is wrong. And uh, we cannot be judgmental in our teaching. So humility, always being a student, being a good human being beyond anything else, these are values. We have three values in Bassey. Mm -hmm. Passion, compassion, and excellence. Those three words encapsulate everything that we do. Passion, compassion, and excellence. Passion is for yourself. Compassion is for others. And excellence is our compass. It's our North Star to guide us in everything we do. And you were talking and you were, you were mentioning about um, kind of the beginner of learning and every year something new. It reminds me of um, I do meditation and I do Zen meditation. And one of the first books that my teacher told me to read was Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. And then it's not because I was a beginner that I had to read it, but it's about keeping the beginner's mind in your life. Because, and I guess, I don't know if this is your point. It's like when you think you know everything, there is no room for new learning and kind of your vision is so square narrow right this is what you mean when when you say i mean that is exactly what i mean there's a great saying that i often put at the beginning of my courses actually from a, a zen buddhist that says in the beginner's mind there are many possibilities or opportunities in the expert's mind there are very few Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you're saying, that the beginner's mind, that mindset is open to possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's open, open, open. Your, your mind is like a sponge. The moment you get into a mindset that you're an expert, there are very few possibilities mm -hmm. and very few opportunities for growth. And that mindset frightens me. Uh, so... You know, I just, that's why I want to be a student all the time, because that mindset frightens me that, that there won't be any growth. So, you know, all the time I try and learn in Pilates and, you know, as I go into, um, you know, 65, 66 and so many years of doing Pilates, I practice all the time. Those that work with me know that. They know that every day. I go up into the studio and I practice and I practice. And I, I, as you get older, you start dealing with a body that is changing and you have to reinvent yourself because no longer can I jump up and demonstrate and look the way I wanted, want to look as I could, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It, it, you know, you need to find a new meaning and hopefully the full meaning is not how well I can do a star, but rather words and, and teachings that I can bring through my teaching. And, and that the worth of my life or my career is not just whether I can demonstrate a beautiful exercise. Wow, this is very profound. And I'm sure our viewers and the ones that are going to view this later, I mean, they're going to teach in a different way if they have never heard I you talk so. before. <laughs> yeah, this is great. So um, when you look back and with all the experience that you have, if you had to start over, what would you have done different? Um. You know, in my career, honestly, I don't think I would have done anything differently. I, I, I really, you know, uh, uh, I did an interview for Pilates 
uh, style magazine and they said, so what is your dream? And I said, I'm living it right now. Uh, you know, the present is my dream. Uh, you know, and, and I, I could, to tell you the truth, I could never have even dreamed that uh, my career would take the path that it has. And in my personal life, you know, I really don't think I would want anything different. Yes, have I made mistakes? Many, <laughs> many. Mm -hmm. But it's those mistakes that guided me to be the person I am today. If I didn't make those mistakes, I would be a different person. I would have taken a different path. The, your mistakes nudge you to go this way or to go that way. And, and that is what guides you. So um, I don't think I would want anything different. <laughs> Great. And then clearly you live in the present moment, right? Definitely. Definitely. And then, so... And I don't want that to be misunderstood that, again, that I haven't made no. mistakes because I've made many mistakes. So, you know, going back through my life and, and thinking, ah, oh, I wish I would, would have been nicer to this person. I wish I would have been more patient with that student. You know, those are, but, but in the big picture of life. Yeah, in the big I, picture. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, so what have been some of the greatest rewards of your career? The greatest, I'm sorry. Rewards. Rewards. Um, of my career, the greatest reward is my Bassey family. Uh, I love them so dearly. They are so diverse. They are so beautiful. They are loving, loving, loving people. Uh, I, I, that is the greatest reward is, 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 is my Bassey family. And then, you know, to have been blessed with having wonderful teachers. Uh, the teacher that was closest to me is uh, my dear friend, mentor teacher, Kathy Grant. Uh, we knew each other for a long time, and, and I, um, she, she was a blessing in my career. But also other teachers, you know, every, every one of the teachers that, that I had the opportunity to spend uh, more or less time with that impacted my life. Um, Romana Krasnowska, Ron Fletcher, Eve Gentry, um, uh, just getting to know Lolita San Miguel. Mm -hmm. um, such a dear friend and, and, and a, a blessing to me. Um, uh, you know, Mary Bowen, I, I don't know as well, but these people are wonderful people. Alan Herdman in, in London. Uh, you know, these are wonderful people who all gave me a lot in my life and all nudged me, guided me um, in, in, in a direction. And... Um, and then the, the people that work with me every day, you know, not Pilates people, but uh, uh, my administrators, finance people, uh, people that are my marketing team, um, you know, they are also supportive of not just me as a person, but supportive of the vision that um, we don't need to be the biggest and I'm not sure what the best means. I used to say we don't need to be the biggest, but we need to be the best. I don't know what best really is because best is such a subjective uh, word. But we need to be, we need to follow our principles, offer great education, offer great support, offer great materials, partner with like-minded companies like yours so that we find people of like mind and like spirit and can support each other. And, um, you know, these, these are all great rewards in my life. The great colleagues that I've met in my life just flooding through my mind are wonderful people. Um, Deborah Lesson, Gillian Hessel, uh, so many people, <laughs> you oh. know, that, that just flood through my mind. You know, uh, it's so many years you, you meet great people, right. uh, you know, it's it just wonderful. And, and this is great how you actually recognize people as the greatest reward in your life, right? Yeah, definitely. It can be many other things, but all your focus has been on 
on people. So that's a lot. And then, so let's go back a bit to the mentor role. If anyone listening to us or watching us would like to open at this time of history, a Pilates studio, virtual or in person, what would be your two things for them? Um, you know, I, I, I would really, uh, if, if someone wanted to open a studio today, it, it's a, it's a tough time to open a studio, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, there will be challenges, but I would, I would say really follow your heart and stay true to your heart. Because when we open a new business, the temptation is to do things that are sometimes contrary to what we really believe in our heart, you know, to make money, to get more people to, so we may um, compromise in ways that we know, uh, I don't really feel good about this, but I'm going to do it because I need more people and I need more money. And I, I have always believed that in the end, if you follow your heart and do what you believe in, behave in a way that is true to your soul, true to your heart, in the end, it will be the better way to go. And, you know, others have probably created bigger businesses than me, maybe more profitable than me. I, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. to me because what's been more important to me is to stay true. And, and every day I, I explore. I'm not very easy on myself. Uh, I, as, as my wife will attest, I, and my son, uh, that it, I come home almost every day and, and discuss the day and discuss ways that I could have done better. And I, I sometimes lie at night and think, I should have done Ooh, right. Sorry, can you hear me? I, I lost you. I cannot hear you. One second. Uh-oh. Oh, I cannot hear you. I think it's your sound. Did you mute yourself? Maybe you press, I don't know. Oh no, I want to lose you. Hmm. If you can hear me, let's try to reconnect. I'm going to log you out and then we can try to reconnect. Oh, shit. Can you hear me? Probably our viewers, can you hear me? Or is just Ryle that you cannot hear, or both? Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Okay, let's try, Ryle. I don't know if you're, if you can, can you hear me? Ryle, can you hear me? No? I'm going to log you out and then invite you again to see if that works. And if anyone in Basi is following this and can convey the message to Ryle in another way, um, 
I'm, I'm going to close and then try to reconnect again. Can you help me, Paula? <laughs> Sometimes it's as simple as just logging out and logging back I'm in. I'm sorry, I saw I saw a phone call come in, and the moment the phone call came in, uh, they we we. Oh, we went to your, your uh, That's perfect. I think I think we can. Now we're good. We're we're almost coming to an end, and I, I know I this has been great, and I Thanks. have just two more questions. And you know, talk it is about feet. And um, for me, when I created talk it, it was about enhancing that food brain connection. Um, it was mandatory at the time when I tried Pilates my first time to wear socks and I didn't like the close toe socks or I didn't like the sock that looks like a glove. And for me it was like, if you're doing a barefoot workout, some part of your foot needs to be barefoot and then I discovered that the toes it was what was giving the barefoot sensation anyway and with that over the time what I came to realize is like the feet is probably one of the parts of the body that people abandon the most in terms of workouts that people sometimes are not even aware of the role of the feet so my question to you is what is your relationship with your own feet? Wow, what a great question. I, I, I just love that question. And I love how you explained, you know, how you came to create Tuckets because I mean that, that I believe a company, a business with a story is always very powerful. And, and you know, I, I believe Bassie has a story. You told me your story now, so I'm like blown away. Wow, that is such a great story to, you Thank know, you. think of because we, you know, I, I agree with you. We don't think enough of our feet and um, uh, at all. Um, I actually do. I think a lot of my feet, uh, my relationship with my feet is very close <laughs> because Sometimes I feel good about my feet. Sometimes I feel my feet are hurting. Uh, I, I surf a lot and I paddle board a lot and I kite board a lot. And there's, there's so much footwork all the time that is happening. Your feet are, are your connection to the surface and our feet are always adapting to the changes of environment. So I put a lot of um, focus on the feet. The feet are the foundation of our body. The feet mm -hmm. are everything that, that comes through our body is coming through our feet from the ground up. So I, I, I love putting my feet into the sand, into the beach sand. Uh, so I, I believe so strongly in, uh, in, in the feet. And, and as dancers, as dancers, we, we um, use our feet mm -hmm. so much. Uh, we, we need to articulate our feet like our hands. And I find that people that, that wear shoes all the time, sometimes athletes come in to see me. And mm -hmm. because they, they've never really worked without their shoes, their big shoes, their feet lack articulation. They don't know how to articulate the feet very well. So I, I'm in love with feet. Uh, I think feet are incredible. The first, the first thing I ever said to my wife, uh, because she was in one of my classes, and I was walking around correcting, and I said, wow, you've got beautiful feet. And uh, so <laughs> I noticed feet very much. Yeah, like, like I do. I, and that was, it's funny, sometimes, life takes you to, like I created a business that I never imagined. I was in foreign affairs before, but it was something about the feet that I always had and socks. 
and she, so I lived in London and I remember looking at the typical English man on their suits, but they always have these amazing, colorful, nice socks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember when I first time that did Pilates, I was like, I don't want to wear these socks, the socks. I mean, apart from removing the barefoot sensation, it was the style, the color. And then, you know, things came. But yes, feet are very important. And talking about your wife. So my question, most of the people that I interview are men. And we talk, oh, sorry, are women. And we talk about motherhood. So I want to talk a bit about finding that balance of being you, you know, the leader in the industry, the business owner, the CEO, the mentor, and being at the same time a father and a husband. How do you find that balance? Wow, well, my son is sitting here right with me, so maybe he should answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you, you know, th th that I can say has is, is really been a, um, quite a struggle, actually. Um, uh, because as I look back, um, I don't think I always had a good balance. And... Um, uh, just because your business takes so much of you and, and we lose the balance, you know, and, and, and every relationship needs to be nurtured, whether it be between uh, my wife and, and I or, or my son. You know, I always wanted to be a, a good father and I have uh, been absent at certain times, very pivotal times. Just yesterday, uh, I was laughing well, not laughing, actually, I take it very seriously, but I was telling my team here, and Ilan, my son, was standing there, and I said, I missed his first birthday because I was teaching on a, an engagement, and I've never forgiven myself, and he said, well, don't worry, I don't really remember my first birthday, but, you know, you live mm -hmm. with those things because uh, they were so important, and... Um, Paula, I, I, I don't know whether I can really advise people. I can say that, that you always should try and keep a balance. You should always remember that it should not, your business should not overcome your personal life. But I can't say that I succeeded amazingly well in that. I, I tried to do the best that I could to, you know, build the business at the same time as nurturing a relationship and then at the same time as raising a son i can tell you one thing that if he is any indication of success or not i feel that we are very successful because he's just a great young man i couldn't be prouder that's for absolute sure so you know i think that if the result is an indication then uh I found a, a pretty good balance along the way because he's awesome. But that may have more to do with my wife than me, so uh, I'm not sure. Well, I think, you know, a family is, is everyone, right? Yeah. And it's, as you said, it's the balance. And, yeah. and like, it is said, like, and behind a gray man, there is always a gray woman. A so, greater woman. Yes. A greater woman. Greater, right. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So my, la my last question is, what's your next dream for Basi? What's next for Basi? What do you wish or dream or? Well, you know, uh, uh, yet another very uh, profound question, honestly, because um, this year, 2020, has been a year like no one on this planet has ever experienced, you know. So it has, uh, I don't think I've ever worked as hard for such a long period of time as, as during this COVID period. Honestly, I think there have been, you know, before a performance or before a very big conference or certain things, I worked for short periods of time very hard. But this has been from the beginning of, COVID in March until now, so much work trying to restructure, adapt. But you know, 
uh, out of all this misery of, of COVID-19, uh, even out of the misery have come some very positive things that have shown me alternative ways of doing business, alternative ways of teaching. Altern I'm not saying I'm taking everything online. You know, that's the immediate instinct. But it's, it's shown me different ways. It's opened up different relationships. And, you know, what is the future for Bassi? I, I would say uh, growing continuing to grow like we have, creating and nurturing new relationships and partnerships, um, continuing to uh, raise more and more wonderful students, uh, opening new countries uh, to Bassi, not just to say we have another country, but to say that we really um, have opened opportunity in that country. Uh, just talking to you makes me want to go back to Colombia and nurture our people in Colombia. And, uh, you know, there's so much greatness in the world. We just have to open our eyes and open our hearts to that greatness and find it. Great. Thank you so much for that answer. And also thank you for being so open and, you know, honest. You're welcome and sharing everything. This has been an amazing interview. Uh, we closed this year, kind of one of my challenges and what COVID brought was this idea of, you know, for me to build more community and get to meet the people that I admire myself mm -hmm. or that my clients admire, or, you know, people that um, I think we can all learn from. Then so with this interview, we're close in 2020. It's my last fireside chat of the year. And I'm so grateful you accepted our invitation. It's not a problem. I, I have, uh, we started fireside chats uh, quite a few years ago with my faculty. Whenever I talk to my faculty, we call it a fireside chat. It was actually my wife's idea. And it's it's been a wonderful way of communicating and mm -hmm. I'm honored that you chose me to close out 2020. And I, I'm sure everyone will share my sentiments in saying, let's hope for a better year next year, May 2021. Yeah. It yeah, has to better be better, year. right? <laughs> it has to <laughs> be worse. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Who knows? Yes. Thank you. Thank you again so much Thank for you so being much. here. And then um, I look forward, hopefully, to seeing you in some Pilates event when they come alive again. <laughs> Muchas <Sometimes>. gracias. <laughs> Thank you so much. I send you a big hug. Thank you. Same to Merry you. Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas and, and Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Thank you so much. I'm Thank not sure you. how to log out, but uh, how do I log out? <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will stop it here. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.